Hi guys, welcome. Oh my god, my list. Welcome back to another vlog. I am so sorry that I have a lisp. If you guys watched my last vlog, then you would have seen that my biggest life update right now is I got Invisalign. It is not a pretty update and I kind of explain why I get it all in that other vlog. So feel free to kind of take a look. You know, now that I got them, it's been, I guess this is like the third day. I'm just really trying to adjust to it. I feel like my teeth really, really hurt, especially every time I take it off. Off. even when I eat it's just not pleasant because I feel like my teeth are just so sore from I guess like the moldings or whatever because of that I think I'm gonna lose a lot of weight you guys because number one to have Invisalign take your trays out when you eat because my crossbite I guess I also have the elastic bands and those take me forever to put on and off so I can't even just like take it on to put it off and also because my nail it's really hard for me to take these trays off so whenever I take a tray off it's an investment of my time because of that I really try to like only eat twice a day which kind of works with my intermittent fasting because I'll eat once at like around 10 a.m. ish and I'll eat again at around like 5 p.m. ish and this also ensures that after 6 p.m. I'm not doing anything I'm not supposed to be doing like even drinking alcohol and wine if you guys follow me on Instagram you guys know I'm a huge wine person and I even have a wine highlight. I think I'm like borderline alcoholic. But anyway, this is gonna turn me not into an alcoholic because of this Invisalign situation. So all in all, pretty good because I'm now encouraged to drink a ton of water and not eat that much and only eat when necessary. So I'm prescribed to do this for 55 weeks and I'm gonna say 55 weeks minimum because the way that it works, if you guys have never had it or are never gonna have it, if you skip a day, you have to continue wearing that for one extra day before you switch to a new tray. I have no intention of wearing this longer than I need to, so I'm just gonna be good with it and just wear it as much as I can. Vlogs moving forward, okay? I will be wearing this in this line. I'm sorry to you, but also more to me because this is hurting me more than it's hurting you guys, I'm sure. The other thing also that I wanted to say about this whole Invisalign situation is that because I am a podcaster which focuses a lot on talking, I think I need to practice how to talk without a lisp. I think that's my goal because obviously, yes, I can take off the trays and then record the podcast, but sometimes me and Teresa, we record on batches because as you guys know, I don't actually live in Vancouver, so we're really trying to take advantage of the time that I'm here to record as many episodes as we can before we have to record it independently. I think our chemistry is just a lot better when we record together because we can kind of see each other's expressions and stuff like that. You're supposed to keep your Invisaligns on 22 hours a day minimum. So that being said, I think my biggest challenge in the next week is to practice speaking without a lisp. I think this might actually be a really good, like beneficial practice because if you guys listen to the podcast, you might notice that my S's are really, really sharp. Over the years, I've tried really, really hard to work on self-improvement. So I'll kind of give you guys a couple of examples while this car drives itself. So example number one, I used to say like a lot, like every other word I'll be like, 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 whatever. <laughs> like one of those typical high school girls because I started doing YouTube. I actually started noticing myself how much I say it. After I say it, I say it, right? So it's kind of more to the listener and the listener is the one that has to deal with me saying the words like all the time. But afterwards, after I started editing my own videos, I noticed how much like I say, which I have consciously really tried to minimize. And I think I've done a really good job so far. That's one of the things. The other thing is the ums. I also try to reduce the number of ums that I have. I still have them a lot and I have some other speaking ones but it's definitely been reduced. It's a daily practice and I'm kind of glad I did YouTube before I did the podcast because I think that if I didn't do YouTube, discover the whole like situation, the podcast might be extremely difficult for you guys to listen to if every five seconds I'm saying the word like. 
because we really don't edit that much of our talking so but anyway okay I feel like I've been rambling for a little bit but I actually wanted to tell you what I'm up to today and I'm finally ready to talk about it I feel like this week I'm going through a lot of visual changes the thing that I'm doing today is I'm actually getting my moles removed so I'm heading over to Yale Town Laser which is in Yale Town it's in Vancouver they're helping me remove a lot of my moles. If you guys are not Asian, or even if you are Asian, maybe you don't know this, there's like a lot of kind of like astrology. People believe that certain areas of your moles are actually bad luck for you. When I was younger, my dad had actually already taken me to remove a lot of my moles. So you just get them lasered off. I don't have the type of moles that stick out, like the ones that really protrude. It's mostly for the color but either way from a luck perspective it still matters and if you guys are wondering if I'm doing this purely for cosmetic reasons I'm not I really don't care about the cosmetic because it's so little I'll show you one of them I think okay one of them is here but it's so little it doesn't protrude outwards or something my family really believes in like the whole luck situation so when I was younger I got them removed after getting them removed one of the aftercare instructions is you're not supposed to let it be exposed to sunlight which as a kid and I was in Taiwan I don't think I gave a shit I, I think I was like eight years old or ten so some of them came back that's why I have them again and once again I lived another like 10 years without carrying them knowing that the one that I have are quote-unquote bad luck but I just continue to live with them until one day and I'm gonna explain the story and I haven't talked about this because it's actually really hard for me to talk about until one day I actually got really fed up and I'm like you know what I don't care anymore I have such bad luck if you guys follow me on Instagram you guys know I have this hashtag called Lisa luck you don't even understand and my friends make fun of me until they actually spend a lot of time with me and they realize I'm telling the truth. So anyway, as I was saying, Lisa luck is a very, very real thing. A lot of situations, bad situations, will happen to me and not anybody else, even if all else equal. Like if everybody else is experiencing the same thing, only I will be on the terrible receiving end. And this has happened multiple occasions. I think the most prominent one where people started to actually believe me was when I went on exchange in Europe. It was just so very clear that just trip after trip, it was like Lisa luck, Lisa luck, Lisa luck. Like just shit kept on happening to me. One example would be, you know, we would all like the entire week be all sharing the same food, family style, drinking, eating, everything is the same. But the only person that would get food poisoning would be me. And I would get the food poisoning like out of all my trips in Europe to have the most terrible food poisoning it was on the longest trip of course it was like the one where I had a layover which I never have layovers in Europe the one that I had the layover a long train ride a long bus ride like you name it and it was like the worst trip to have food poisoning and I got it and nobody else got it it was so bad to the point that we were lining up to get on the flight at the very last second I was next to scan my ticket to get on the plane and I had to be like I'm so sorry be right back ran to the bathroom oh my god this is so gross I don't know why I'm sharing the story I opened the bathroom stall and projectile vomited all over the girl's bathroom in Lisbon in the airport if you by chance were in Lisbon during that time and you came into a bathroom that was extremely disgusting filled with projectile vomiting I'm so sorry that was me I didn't have time to apologize because literally right after it I had to run to catch my flight and I just made it it was so bad anyway the most recent thing that has sparked this situation is this okay and I'm finally ready to talk about it about a month or two ago I bought GameStop stocks when it was low before the surge okay way before i bought them at like 30 something dollars i was holding like 200 something shares close to 300 i think it was either 200 or 300 to be honest i'm not very clear on how many shares i was holding because i refuse to look at it because every time i think about this situation this is one of those situations i had to go to therapy for i'm not even joking I bought this right right before the surge basically five days before the surge I sold all my stocks 
I made some money, a modest, modest amount of money, but not compared to what would have happened had I sold that Wednesday. And it, it's funny because I don't usually sell my stocks. Like I usually buy to hold. So I don't know what possessed me to sell my stocks. I sold them. I cried that day. I was like, oh my God, that was like another Tesla. Literally, I was like crying. I went to see my therapist like right after that, coincidentally. I have never been so FML in my entire life. After this whole situation, I immediately called around to inquire about these, <laughs> about mole removal. This is actually becoming really extreme. I know, and there's no correlation, you guys, but this is my mentality, okay? If I can enhance my luck, even by 1%, I'm down. That 1% could mean a lot to me, okay? I wasn't even superstitious. I'm down to believe my parents now, okay? Like, what could I lose? There's nothing I can lose. And also, even if my luck does not change, I would have just looked better. Like I have one less brown dot off of my face. So really there's like no harm in me getting my moles removed. That is kind of the situation that kind of prompted this whole thing. I'm gonna tell you guys another quick story. What happened in Europe that was like another like super FML moment. I was like traveling with a group of six, right? I think I like actually mentioned this story somewhere before. We were in Budapest. We were just like buying tickets for the subway. There was like nobody in the subway station, okay? Literally like the subway station was empty i was just buying my ticket and i was like looking at it and i couldn't really understand the language or whatever or understand what was going on so then i put my phone in my pocket and usually i'm very careful because you know you're warned that there's like a huge pickpocketing culture in europe which i knew and whenever there's like a lot of people around i'm like very careful but there was literally nobody around like literally nobody the closest person was like a hundred meters away. So I put my phone in my pocket in that one second, I guess someone might have been like eyeing me using my phone and it was like a brand new iPhone 7 plus. That was the phone that like just came out at the time. He literally within that one second, I had let go of my phone in my pocket, ran, took it out of my pocket so subtly that I barely even noticed. I was like, wait, where's my phone? Like I was actually so confused until I saw someone running and I did feel like a little brush against my side. So then by the time I pieced it together, I was like chasing after him. So anyway, long story short, we chased after this guy all over Budapest. We actually found him, like our dots on Find My Friend, because we all had each other on Find My Friends. So we were like dot over dot, but we were in a mall. So it was like, even though we were geographically in the same location, but like which floor, like we didn't know. I ended up like bringing it just by chance to see if anyone near me would like turn around. Turns out he like got spooked and then he turned off the phone. So immediately after I lost my phone, I was crying. The very next day, I had no phone. I had no phone to take pictures. If you guys are just like following my journey, you guys will know that Europe is kind of what sort of kickstarted my Instagram. I was like taking a lot of photos in Europe because I had no more phone. I started taking my camera around. So the very next day, I took my digital camera out. As I was taking a picture, I was like, oh my God, I should put the strap around my neck so I don't drop my camera. I put the strap around my neck, it slides off and it literally, the entire camera hits the ground as I was trying to put it around my neck to not let it drop and like accidentally fall off. Instead, it slips and falls right in front of me despite my whole reasoning of wanting to put the strap around me. And this happened literally the day after my phone was stolen. You couldn't use the camera anymore. So literally back to back two days, I lost my brand new iPhone 7 Plus. I broke my digital camera. Even after all of that, like I was still super understanding and I was like, you know what? Everything happens for a reason. The person who stole it from me probably just really, really needed the money. You know what? You can have my phone. Like if you are that desperate to have to do this as a job, you take it. Like you, you go for it. But then with the whole GameStop situation, the reason why it made me so upset is because number one, selling stocks is so out of character for me. Like I never sell my stocks. For me to suddenly sell my stocks out of nowhere, it's like, why did I do that? Second of all, I would understand if I sold my stocks and I could have made like another few thousand dollars or whatever, like something like kind of small. I would have been like, oh, that sucks. Like whatever, but that's how the stock market is. But instead, I missed out on history's biggest short. This event made global news like of course the one time i do something it's not just like some little event it's like literally for the next two weeks i keep on seeing gamestop gamestop to gamestop like literally all over my phone and i'm like i swear to god something is just trying to taunt me 
But anyway, that's like me rambling on for a really long time. I have now explained more than necessary why I'm getting my moles removed. If you guys are dying that this reason is absurd, you know what? It is absurd. Okay, I agree. It is absurd. If I can improve my luck by just 1%, we're in for it, okay? We got this. So anyway, I'm gonna finally shut up now and I'm gonna bring you guys along to my appointment. So I will see you guys in a bit. Okay, so we've highlighted the areas that we are going to dot off and this is the machine that we're going to be using. It's called PicoWave. I'm excited to show you guys. Okay, so this is the device that we're using, right? It is. Nice. And I'm going to be doing a press run on a few of them. Okay. So just letting you know that. I just came out of the treatment center. So this was Yale Town Laser, obviously in Yale Town. And that experience was so pleasant and just so fast. And also like, I just love this clinic. First of all, it's like in such a great location. Second of all, it's so clean in there. They follow all these COVID protocols and they even have pens that were like sectioned off as like used and like new. So they're really, really safe here. But also just kind of to talk Talk a little bit about the moles basically the machine that they helped me use was called pico way as you guys saw and i didn't just remove the two moles so what's really really classified as like a technical mole would be this one here and this one up here so these two they were able to remove but as you guys saw from the circles i actually removed a lot more so i actually removed freckles as well so even if you guys are looking for either light mole removal 
pimple or even just freckles i highly recommend doing this i felt absolutely no pain the girl that helped me her name's tara and she tried explaining the feeling to me she was like it's gonna just feel like an elastic band so i was like oh my god that's gonna hurt but when it actually came to it i felt nothing like i actually feel like sometimes when you're walking down the street if something kind of like brushes against your face that hurts more than what i had just gone through I don't even think I have that big of a pain tolerance. I'm not sure, but that was like absolutely not painless at all. She was also very knowledgeable. So like she knew that I had Asian skin and she knew like how to treat it based on my skin color and skin condition. No matter, you know, like who you are, I think they were like super knowledgeable on doing this. So, I mean, this video is not sponsored, but they did comp this treatment for me. So I'm very excited to show you guys the next two weeks. Basically the aftercare I was told to to just not use any intense chemical treatments no retinols for a while for two weeks and it should start immediately after it should get darker and then afterwards then it'll kind of crust and then it'll go away i should be able to see results in two weeks so i'm really excited to show you guys my new face and also of course if my luck improves but yeah that's i guess that's like the other thing but anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this vlog and i will talk to you guys guys in the next one. Bye!